Hi everybody, thank you so much for being here and welcome back to another Wellness Wednesday. So I am here today to talk about toxic relationships and I want everybody to know that even though I come from an abusive relationship, I think a lot of people don't understand that they perhaps have been in toxic toxic relationships and this doesn't even have to be romantic this can definitely platonic kind of relationships where you know a lot of the times it may take the actual act of physical abuse for people to wake up to the abuse that they already have been you know uh going through so i want to talk about more so though once you've left the relationship uh, regardless again of if it is romantic or platonic or whatever what are kind of some steps to do to try to get over that, get over emotional baggage, that sort of thing. And what helped me most, I'll explain to you here. So the first one for me, definitely, and I know I've said this repeatedly, so I'm sorry, but I don't really care. I think it's extremely important and it's taking care of your body, your mind and your soul. And it's truly, you know, making sure that you are healthiest, in your best kind of mental state, in your best kind of spiritual state. And I know those are really broad and wide topics, but it truly is, I think, extremely important. And I do think that trickles into our number two. But my number one really is just try to evaluate kind of your life, looking in as if you were a friend or a parent or somebody who cared about you. You know, what would they say about your eating habits, your lifestyle, you know, what are you doing? Are they things that are helping and enhancing your life or are they detrimental to you in any way? Try to be not so emotional when you are looking into trying to change yourself. Try to look from a different perspective into your life because I truly think that's a lot of what I did um, kind of in the beginning of just you are awakened and I certainly was awakened to understanding like I was in this deep, crazy, abusive relationship and I had no idea that I was in it. Like, what else have I been neglecting? Clearly it was my body and a lot of other things that made me who I was, um, which all gets entangled into the abuse, obviously, and that's what happens. But I think it really is important um, to understand that you need to really care and take the time to look at yourself, which leads then into number two, which is loving yourself, which may be the most important one on this list because it is so true and it is so important to know that you need to love yourself. And this is something I've struggled with every day. This is something that I think most people struggle with. And I think this is something that more people struggle with than they even want to admit or more than what people will ever put out there. You know, it is humans, and I think people inherently are their own worst critic and we are very harsh on ourselves and we're very hard on ourselves. But you have to realize that you need to understand the beauty of who you are inside and out before you are able to ever find somebody to either, you know, enhance that challenge that whatever you're looking for in a relationship. Um, if you don't love yourself and you don't have the respect for yourself in the beginning, how are you ever going to find somebody to, you know, take care of that or water that. Um, and so that's why I think it is so, so important to love yourself. And additionally, if you don't figure out kind of your self-worth and loving yourself, you will fall back into the same relationships. You will find the same kind of people. You will go after what you already have because you haven't solved the problem, um, which for me definitely was figuring out my own self-worth and my own love. Um, and then from me learning and kind of loving myself goes into number three, which was figuring out more of my passions and figuring out who I am, what makes me tick, what things do I love beyond myself. I love music, I love makeup, I love expressing myself. I'm a very creative person. I love teaching and being just present with people and having people learn and people becoming the best people they can because I truly try to believe that you know, even though there are such horrible things in the world, I, in some little place in my heart, has to believe that most people want good. And 
sure that's probably the optimist in me but it does help me kind of get through that i i really do think most people want the best for others and especially themselves and if we can keep pushing ourselves to be better and do better other people will latch on to that and see it and i want nothing more than just a chain reaction of people loving what they do because i think when people find what they love to do you're able to do it better you're able to do it at a higher a premium level you know i'm not going to go I don't know, what is something I'm not good at? I'm not gonna go play chess because and become a, you know, a, a lead chess player because I don't really like chess and I'm certainly not very good at it. You know, if you find something that you love to do and you're kind of good at it, do those 10,000 hours and make yourself, a, you know, a pro at it. Make yourself as good as you can be because when you have the love and the passion for something, it will only be then heightened you know, your creativity level and what you're able to accomplish. Um, then for number four, something similarly to me understanding getting out of the abusive relationship or the toxic relationship is there probably were people or ties or family that weren't really in the picture that either got pushed away or that were part of your life that somehow things got twisted because of who you were with or who you were friends with. And I think it is so important to try to rekindle those friendships and relationships with people that made you a better person, people that help challenge you to become better, people that help you to push you to be better, people that inspire you. You know, go find those people if you've lost any of them and try to reconnect with them. I think it is really important to try to get to the center of who you are as a person, the center of who you are as just a human. And especially if you are close with family or friends that they've known you for years, they are gonna know who you are. They're gonna know what makes you tick and they will bring you back to who you were. You know, it, it's remembering and recounting all of the things. And for me, especially my past and reconnecting with my family and my friends that I, basically kind of just ignored for years um, was so important and really those the people that love you will understand why and how things happen and would a lot of the times I mainly got you know oh my god I wish I knew I wish I could have been there to help and I think most people will understand if you tell them that you were in a really bad place or you were in a toxic relationship or you were in a place where you just couldn't find help People will understand that. People will gravitate towards honesty and truth and integrity in a person. And then lastly, which I know I've also mentioned before and kind of arcs over everything for me, is therapy. I truly believe I have gotten much better with myself and being open with myself because of therapy. And I think I really needed therapy not only because I, I was diagnosed with PTSD, um, because of the abuse and the trauma that I went through, but because I needed to help myself learn what truly the issue was. You know, I needed to learn that it was because of my body issues, which led to a really bad poor self-esteem and low self-worth. That's why I got into an abusive relationship. I did not have respect for myself. I didn't have respect for who I was. And that's why I was able to, you know, be abused. I, I didn't have anything. And as you, if you know anything about abuse, once it starts and once one thing goes through, then the abuser will keep trying and doing harder and more awful abusive behaviors. And as that continues to happen, your self-worth as mine was already low, but it continues to dive and keep going lower and lower, which makes it thus even harder and harder to get out. Um, so it, it is definitely a cycle of abuse. It is a cycle of something that is very difficult, difficult to get out of. But if you're able to get out of it, I do wish I would have started therapy sooner because it helps the process of just healing. And it helps the process of just processing. Honestly, going through the emotions, going through and understanding, you know, why I went into this relationship, why I became friends with this person, whatever it may be. It is understanding what you needed at the core. Um, and once you figure that out, I think the rest of kind of the emotions and things start to trickle down by themselves. So I hope these five things helped you. And I certainly hope if you need help from anybody that you're able to reach out, 
as always, in my description box are hotline numbers and my whole domestic abuse story. If you are looking for any answers or help, you know, feel free to check out my videos. It may help you guide, you know, your life into what you think you may, um, you don't know that you're in. Um, it's very hard to understand that you're in an abusive relationship and it takes sometimes outside perspectives for you to try to wake up a little and understand that you are worth it, that you are important, that uh, you matter. Um, and obviously know that you're not alone. You know, this happens to more people than you know, and it takes strength and it takes pride and character to get out, but know that you can. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I hope to see you on the next one, wherever you are, whatever you may be doing, you know, Try to do something you love every day if you can. All right. Bye.